All right, uh, welcome back in. Uh, still uh, talking about items in Chapter 5 of OpenStax, and right now we're talking about some of the accessory structures within the integument, uh, including the hair follicles, uh, and that's what we're going to look at here. Uh, I want you first to notice that hair follicles, uh, although they appear to be down within the dermis, uh, and they are down within the dermis, but in fact they are actually penetrations of the epidermis down into the dermis. And how can I tell or how can you tell? Well, notice this light uh, skin colored, flesh colored uh, material here. And notice that that is what is the hair follicle. And so that has penetrated down into the dermis, much like these dermal papilla have done so. Uh, and as they're doing that, they're getting deeper and deeper within the dermis. And they actually create down here an area where the dermis and the epidermis have an intimate connection to one another, something I'll talk about in a moment. Okay, so anyway, the hair follicle, uh, although is a structure found primarily within the dermis, in fact is a uh, representative of the ep of the epidermis. Okay, so let's get started here. If you if you come down to the bottom of the hair follicle down here, deep within the dermis, you'll find this sort of uh, broadened area here. It's called the hair bulb. The hair bulb is actually primarily uh, made up of epidermis, but it surround it has two parts that are actually derived from the dermis. First, this little core piece here, which looks like capillaries and arterioles and venules, and it, and it is in the picture here. This is called the hair papilla. It primarily consists of connective tissue and, as I say, some, some pieces uh, coming up through the hypodermis, including these capillary beds and so on. And anyway, in, in any event, the hair papilla is at the very core of the hair follicle. The epidermal structures around it start here and include the outer root sheath, and then here in green the inner root sheath, and then here again in flesh is the hair matrix. And I'll, I'll tell you a little bit about these pieces in a, bit, in a bit. This actually in here is the beginnings of a hair shaft, which is what actually extends outside the skin here. So this is the very beginnings of a hair shaft, and we'll talk about that in, in just a moment. Um, but those three pieces, the outer root sheath, the inner root sheath, and the hair matrix, uh, are all epidermal derivatives that have plunged down into the epidermis and have intimately surrounded this hair papilla, which again comes from the from the hypodermis and the dermis. <clears throat> it's mainly connective tissue uh, and blood vessels. Uh, and then uh, the the part that I haven't talked about yet is this clear piece uh, piece right here, which is often referred to as the glassy membrane. And the glassy membrane really is all elastin and collagen fibers derived from the, from the dermis. Uh, and that's uh, just kind of where the epidermal tissue connects to the dermis is met with this sort of uh, thin layer of connective tissue that anchors it in place. So that's how the epidermal and dermal tissues interact down in the hair follicles uh, in this bulb area here uh, to sort of anchor it in place. Um, the blood vessels that you see coming up out of the hypodermis here and uh, within to the, into the hair papilla are providing the nourishment that is needed uh, for these cells uh, to begin growing uh, and producing these uh, hair shafts. And so what kind of cells are we talking about? Well, remember that the epidermis has these epithelial cells within them called basal cells, which are kind of like the stem cells of the epidermis. And that's what you actually see here within the hair matrix. This layer right here uh, is a layer of basal cells uh, that are producing brand new skin cells on a mitotically uh, continuous basis. All day long, they're producing new new uh, cells that will epithelial cells, which eventually will contribute to this hair. And as new cells are produced here in the hair matrix, it is forcing the shaft. Uh, these are the the cells that have just been produced. Uh, the, the hair cells, these keratinized cells, are getting pushed up through the, the hair sh uh, follicle and eventually out through the surface of the epidermis and exposed uh, to, the, to the atmosphere here. Um, and so, so again, these cells that are being produced by the, the stratum basal or the basal uh, epithelial cells, <clears throat> just like the ones in the skin, are going to slowly be uh, replaced by keratin as internally they are producing tons and tons and tons of keratin within their own cells. Uh, they eventually uh, will kill out the, the nucleus and the cell eventually dies. In fact, by the time these keratinized cells are pushed up and are becoming part of the hair and eventually here, 
are emerging from the body, these cells here are entirely dead, just like the, the stratum corneum is entirely dead. Same thing here. All these cells are just keratinized. Uh, skin cells essentially that have become part of the hair shaft. That's why when you cut your hair, you don't sense anything. There's no pain there. There's no feeling there. Uh, and it's also why you don't damage the hair at all. You can cut your hair and it doesn't damage the growth of the hair because all of that's going on down here in the dermis as brand new cells uh, are being added to the base of this hair shaft and getting pushed up. And again, as they're getting pushed up, they're, they're filling their internal uh, compartments with keratin and eventually dying. Uh, and eventually uh, uh, they emerge from the from the body. Okay, a couple other things to notice. Um, some hair has a, a core part of it, not all hair, uh, but some does have this sort of very light colored here uh, area called the medulla of the hair follicle. You can see that the medulla gets smaller and smaller and eventually is gone altogether by the time it emerges out of the body. You'll find the medulla in some and not other hair, uh, and there's a lot of research into why that's the case, but uh, I'm not going to worry about that. But the core of the hair is uh, hair shaft is called the medulla. Outside of that, you'll have what is known as the cortex. And the cortex uh, is this light brown area right here. So this very light brown right in there is the cortex, so medulla and then cortex. And then most importantly, and this is because this is the, the hardened nature of hair that gives it its protective status, is this darker brown part here called the cuticle. Uh, and those are just very hardened, keratinized cells. But that's really what your hair is. And, and so, you know, depending on how much of this cuticle you have, your hair is either going to be stiffer or finer. Uh, and that, you know, that just changes from person to person as to the, to the total uh, distribution of how much of your hair is going to be cuticle, how much is going to be cortex, and if you or if you do not have medulla uh, within your hair follicle, okay, uh, hair, hair shaft. Okay, a couple other pieces to notice about the hair follicle. Uh, number one is take a look at this interesting muscle here. This is called the erector pili muscle, uh, and the erector pili muscle uh, originates on the hair follicle itself and inserts onto a dermal papilla. Uh, by a slut, by a tiny little tendon here, and these little tiny muscles are really important. And, and what they do is they pull on the hair shaft, uh, and when they do, they they make the hair stand up. So by shortening this length right here, they can pull the hair shaft this in this direction, and actually raises the hair uh, up off the surface. And this creates uh, what we call goosebumps. So if you uh, are experiencing goosebumps on the surface of your skin, what's happening is these erector pili are contracting and pushing the skin, uh, pushing the hair up and creating these little goosebumps. Um, and so that's what the erector pili are. Very important actually uh, for the functioning of, of your hair as a protective um, as a protective device. Now, you know, some mammals have uh, much more need of erector pili than we do. So some animals, for example, you might have seen a dog uh, where they get uh, upset or scared or frightened uh, and their hair stands up on their back. Uh, that is accomplished by these many, many, many erector pili, one muscle to each one of the hair follicles. Uh, and as that hair stands up on their back, that's what's doing it. It's these erector pili muscles that are being innervated by uh, nerve cells and uh, the, the brain tells them, hey, you know, I, I'm frightened and, and they, they stand up. So, and you have the same kind of thing. Uh, again, when you get goosebumps, uh, that's exactly what's happening. These erector pili muscles are pulling on the, on the, on the follicle uh, and standing the hair shaft up and creating those goosebumps. Okay, so that's the erector pili muscle. Uh, one more thing to notice, which I think is interesting, is that all of your your hair follicles will tend, will have these sebaceous glands and this is an accessory structure that we're going to learn about in a moment many sebaceous glands uh, in the skin uh, are going to be what we refer to as oil glands these are producing a uh, a lipid an oil uh, that is going to line the hair shaft uh, and protects the hair itself it, it makes the hair even more waterproof than it would be from the keratinized nature of the hair. So this, this uh, uh, oil uh, producing gland called the sebaceous gland does just that. It produces an oil that uh, protects the hair and makes it even more waterproof. Okay, and so that uh, concludes what we're going to learn about or what I'm going to ask you to know about the hair follicles.